This is my home. This is my kitchen. This is my family. Tilly. Jack. Holly. Megan. And of course, my wife Tana. You may think you're the busiest person in the world, but over this series, I'm going to prove it's still possible to cook stunning food at home. My rules are simple. Home cooking has to be easy. It's got to be fast. It's got to be delicious. So, if you think you can't cook amazing food at home, think again. Over the festive holidays, these are the only recipes you'll ever need. Everyone in our house really loves hot food on freezing cold days. This is packed with chilli heat and aromatic spices. Fantastic stews, spicy grilled meats and even chilli flavoured puddings. So, when everyone is around during the holidays and craves dinner with a kick, it's got to be my crispy roast duck with black bean dipping sauce and a hoisin and cucumber salad, followed by an amazing banana tartar tan. That is a full-on spice fest. Megan, yeah. you're going to help with the duck, darling? Your favourite? Yes, it is. Now, what do you love most about duck? The dipping sauce. The dipping sauce. I love that. And uh, let's get the duck in the oven first. Some spring onion, garlic and ginger. Now, why do you think we put that in there? To season it and flavour it. Mm -hmm. What are they? Star anise. Star anise. Tuck that in there. To get it spicy, rub all that Chinese spice spice yeah. over. Almost like you're massaging. Good. That is seriously spicy. And that goes there. By slowly roasting it, mm -hmm. it's going to get nice and crisp on the outside. Right, duck's in. Three and a half hours at 160 degrees Celsius. Your favourite part, you said, was the... Dipping sauce. Seeing as it's your favourite, now you can make it. I'm going to do nothing, OK? Daddy's going to put his feet up. So, uh, first off, the garlic. There's one. Good. Nice. Watch your fingers. I am. <laughs> What's your fingers? Slow, slow down. Like 14. In a few years' time, we'll be teaching you how to drive as well as cook. How that exciting one. is that? You and I in a car. <laughs> Scary thought. <laughs> Crispy duck is traditionally served with hoisin sauce, but my brood love the additional big, bold punch of black beans. Nice. Megan and I add soy sauce. And lastly, for that classic Chinese sweet and sour element, brown rice vinegar and honey. Uh, you happy with the flavour? I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. You can taste everything in there. Mm. Dipping sauce done. Ducks in the oven. Let's start the dessert. The most amazing tartar tan. Are those pink peppercorns? They are pink peppercorns. The pink peppercorns give it the sweetness. The black peppercorns give the heat. Now, what is that, baby? Vanilla. This is a sort of take on the classic apple or pear to tan. I bet that tastes amazing. Oh, my goodness. Incredible. OK, we're going to make the caramel. And you just press that butter in there. How come you do it like that and not let it just melt naturally? Mm -hmm. Because I want the butter to stay cold, because I'm going to stick the bananas in there. OK. And then we'll make the caramel and caramelise the bananas at the same time. Oh, okay. So in goes those vanilla seeds. Pods in there as well. OK, peppercorns done. Sprinkle them over that butter. And then, look, just very carefully, sprinkle sugar over that. Roughly the same size. Wedge it into the butter. It will stop them moving around. Spring the peppercorns on top of the bananas so you can get that flavour. Right. Puff pastry. Puff pastry is difficult and time-consuming to make, so I always buy ready-made when I'm at home. And keep your pastry cold before using it. And this is where it gets really exciting. You get your fingers and you just pinch the end, so you thin the end. If you can do that for me very carefully, you have to be quick, because the heat of your fingers can melt the pastry. Now, we take a spoon. And what we do is lift up that banana and tuck it underneath. See? Lift up like the banana. Like a parcel. Like a parcel. And see the thin bits of pastry? Yeah. How easy it is to get it underneath. Yeah. And that's why you thin them out. See how locked down that is? Mm-hmm. Gas on. We're going to start caramelising that. Those three little holes are so important. Mm -hmm. If we didn't put a hole in the Before pastry... And it will cause a lot of steam, so the pastry never cooks, it just goes really soggy. Okay. The caramel's live now. We're working the caramel. Now that pastry 
OK, it's like clinging on to the bananas. And so when we turn it upside down, we've got this glove full of these caramelised bananas. Look at that. Wow. Uh, it's your birthday soon. On my 50th, you're 18. Perfect. We should do a joint party. Yeah, love it. 12 to 4 for the old ones so they can go to sleep. Me Megan, And then please. we'll go on later. Come on. Perfect. <laughs> This is where I get excited now. Look at the colour of that caramel. Wow, it's gotten a lot darker now. Didn't mm -hmm. take long. Didn't take long at all. That's nearly ready for the oven. Mm -hmm. But before I put that in, I'll get the duck out. Wow. How's the duck doing? Crispy. Wow. And delicious. So, 20 minutes for the duck to rest, and 20 minutes in the oven at 190 to 200 degrees for our banana tartar tan. Time to knock up a quick hoisin and cucumber salad to put in our crispy duck pancakes. For the dressing, combined hoisin sauce, rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, a dash of sesame oil, and to give it that zingy Asian punch, some freshly grated root ginger. For the salad, Trim and cut spring onions into very fine matchsticks. Peel a whole cucumber into long, thin ribbons. And shred in a couple of baby gem lettuces. Season and toss this fresh, crunchy salad in the sweet, yummy hoisin dressing. A combination that never fails to get the kids eating their greens. Wow. That. So, see now where that pastry is caramelising. Caramel, so dark. And just a little tip. Gas back on, and that will release it. So now, you see when it starts spinning yeah, around like that? see it's moving around a lot. It's moving around. And here we are, the moment of truth, when you know your daddy is the best chef in the world. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Yeah. Look at the vanilla. How delicious it is that? It looks amazing. It smells it? really good as well. Right, you take them and your dipping sauce. Get them over. Thank you. I'll take the duck. Don't drop it. Promise. OK. Yeah. That looks amazing. My ultimate big and bold dinner of crispy roast duck with pancakes with a hoisin dressed salad and some extra oomph from Megan's favourite black bean dipping sauce. You need the other one? Wow. Nice. Yeah. Holly, I think you need a bit more duck in there. You <laughs> hungry, Hal? <laughs> Honestly, it's like a duck burrito. Why <laughs> <laughs> me, Dad? And for a big and bold pudding, delicious spiced banana tart to tan. Jack's going to be so upset. Can I have a little bit? Isn't water? he? I think we might have to save him some. Swimming makes him very hungry. Let's save him a wishbone of the duck. <laughs> That's me. Mm. Who doesn't love a wonderful hot and spicy curry? Here's how the professionals get their chilli kicks. This is the first Indian restaurant in the world to be recognised with a Michelin star. Always cook meat on the bones. The bones and the marrow add to the flavour in the spices and add so much richness to the sauce. Absolutely delicious. Incredible curry during this time of the year is my mum's meatball curry. We used to make it with half of pork mince and half of beef mince, ground with whole spices like cinnamon, cardamom and cloves. Works great simmered in that tomatoey, caramelized onion gravy. That's soul food. I'm not always in the mood for something that's really chilly hot, but I love eating curry. In fact, some of the curries of Southeast Asia don't have any chilli in at all. They rely on black pepper to give heat and warmth and an amazing different kind of spice. If I'm cooking a Southeast Asian curry, I normally want to use a bird's eye chilli because that's what they use in Southeast Asia. That is a small, fresh, hot chilli that is perfect with galangal and lemongrass and gives this amazing brown freshness to the curries from that region. One of my most important rules is making sure that my spices are really fresh. Whole spices last a year or two, but ground spices only really last a month or two. So I find it's best to buy whole and grind them myself. When I really want to impress, I go for a, uh, a venison and spinach curry. 
using the shoulder of venison. What's great about venison is because they spend a lot more time running around than most animals, they say they get a lot more flavour, which means it isn't overpowered by the spices and it's really delicious. I was in Thailand a couple of years ago on holiday and had some fantastic food there. And one of the things that I recommend we do here is to use chicken thigh. Keep it on the bone, keep the skin on so those flavours go into it. A little bit of coconut, a little bit of lemongrass. One meal I cook at least once a week is pork curry. I always use the shoulder. Really juicy. Don't be afraid of a little bit of fat. We cook a really nice spicy curry, even my kids love it. When you want a clean, fresh, zingy breakfast to give yourself a kick and the feel-good factor, my hot and tangy fruit salad is perfect. Start off with a chilli. Now, give it a little rub. So, hear those seeds being released. Get your knife and come all the way down. Finally, chop that chilli. I want this salad slightly hot, so I'm going to use all the chilli but half the seeds. Next, one of my favourite pastes, tamarind paste. This is quite tart, quite sour, but it's a wonderful complement to the sweetness of the fruit, and it goes brilliantly well with the chilli. Palm sugar. And this is where it sweetens up the dressing, because it enriches it. Then the zest and the juice of a lime. Cut it into quarters, and then twist the lime. So you maximise on all that juice out. Now, to finish that dressing off, some toasted peanuts. A little touch of salt. That'll help dry, roast the peanuts even quicker. Make sure you get a really nice dark colour on those peanuts. To crush your roasted nuts the mess-free way, simply wrap them in a clean cloth and use a rolling pin or a pan to bash them. Now, for the fruit, slice the pineapple in half and then slice down each quarter. Slice across and chop. Delicious pineapple chunks. Next, apples and pears, diced. Then to give a lovely, fresh, light note, de-seeded cucumber. I don't want the seeds in the fruit salad. The cucumber seeds will make it very watery and dilute the strength of that wonderful chilli in there. Cucumber in with some sweetness. Delicious mango. Just slice it nicely. Get your dressing and just drizzle that over the fruit salad in. But really make sure that you've got that nice coating on all the fruits. It transforms a traditional fruit salad into something really delicious. Spicy fruit salad with a kick of chili, trust me, is an incredible breakfast and a guaranteed pick me up in the morning. Coming up, more of my hot food for cold days. But first, here's a closer look at some of the key ingredients you'll need to buy to make them. First up, a Southeast Asian essential, lemongrass. Buy it as a paste, dried or powdered, but I love it fresh best. Most of the flavour is in the thick bowl bend, which can be either crushed or chopped to add flavour to a dish. Wrapped in cling film, it will keep for up to 10 days in the fridge. Lemongrass is central to Southeast Asian foods, especially Thai, and I'm using it in my lunch and dinner recipes. Peppercorns may be small, but whatever the colour in terms of flavour, they're one of the heavyweights of the kitchen. With the exception of the pink type, all peppercorns are fruits from the same flowering vine. It's the stage at which they are harvested and how they are processed that determines their unique colours and taste. Star anise is an aromatic, aniseedy, star-shaped pod widely used in Chinese cooking. Fantastic simmered in savoury broths or infused in sweet puddings. Star anise is widely available in supermarkets, but for the thrifty, it can be bought in bulk from specialist Asian grocers. Properly stored in an airtight container, the pods will last for several months. For lunch in the holidays, a big bowl of hot spicy clam noodle soup followed by sweet banana and coconut fritters is a real treat for my lot. So good. Take your bananas, and to get them really nice and soft, just rub the banana. Sit together, 
flour and baking powder. Sugar into the flour. Then add coconut for texture and a pinch of salt. Sounds strange in the dessert, but it works brilliantly, especially with the fritters. It makes the batter nice and crisp. Start crushing. And then, once you've mixed that through, I'm going to make that mix now slightly fragrant with some lime zest. Now, the lime just really elevates the sort of richness and the denseness of the banana. Cover it with clinfil so it doesn't get a skin on top. Set that in the fridge for 15 minutes. As the banana fritter mixture rests, I'm getting on with my broth for the noodle and clam soup. Fish stock is the base. Bring that up to the boil. Now, in with chopped shallots, fresh ginger, and a whole chili, seeds and all. Just chop once and into the broth. Bring it up to the boil and let it simmer. Galinga is a sort of well, it's like a softer version of ginger, slightly milder. You can use galangal paste, but I prefer the fresh stuff. The stems for coriander. We'll finish the broth with the heads. And that's what endeared me to the Southeast Asian style of cooking. And across my travels there was there's no waste. In. Lime leaves. For me, one of my favorites. Incredibly pungent, strong, full of flavor. Just tear them. In. Now, the lemongrass. So the secret here, that's where all the flavor is, right at the very end. So you take the back of the knife and you just bash the lemongrass. So all that flavor is going to run out in seconds. That's the base of the broth done. And the longer you leave it, the more intense it gets. Whilst the broth infuses, you soak your rice noodles in boiling water for 10 minutes. Just enough time to fry your fritters. And the batter now is ready. Use a metal spoon to drop the batter to the bottom of the pan. The minute they hit that oil, they puff up. That's why it's important to put your spoon into the oil so the mixture runs off and creates this lovely little fritter. And then gently fry. Get a slotted spoon and nice and carefully turn them over. The smell of that lime is extraordinary. Fry for two to three minutes. As they start floating, it signifies the fact that they're cooked off with a gas and just let them drain. Look at those beauties. Lovely. Sprinkling when they're hot with the sugar actually sticks to them. The last job before serving, the clams. Never be scared of cooking shellfish. The most important rule is if they are slightly opened a millimeter Discard it. Make sure mussels, clams, are always tight. Cook the clams for just three to five minutes or until they're all open. Bring that up to the boil, and this is where we finish the broth. Touch of fish sauce, a little sprinkle of sugar. Drain your noodles into the bowl. For added texture, some delicious bean sprouts. Get your lime. Fresh squeeze of lime juice in. Beautiful. Literally, as the stock comes up to the boil, the clams open automatically. So they cook beautifully. The flavor from inside the clam has enhanced the broth. The smell is incredible. The clams cooked, finished with fresh coriander, and serve. There you have a perfect lunch. A delicious, spicy clam noodle with an amazing banana fritter. My spicy clam noodle soup and banana and coconut fritters made in minutes and proof. You only need to travel as far as your kitchen to get the taste of Southeast Asia. Holidays or not, everyone in our house is always pretty hectic with sports, shopping, or even homework. So for dinner, I like to change the pace and make lovely spicy slow-cooked dishes. And one of my family's favorites is brilliantly spicy braised oxtail stew with a radish salad followed by chili poached pears. And when my mum's around, trust me, I love getting her in the kitchen. Now, oxtail was something that we grew up with. 
Yep. It's something you do in the morning and put it in the oven because it has to be cooked really, really slow. Yes. I'm going to dust this in flour. It's amazing how I used to make it stretch for, like, five or six dinners. Oh, you don't exaggerate. <laughs> it's not that bad. Now I know why we're all so skinny <laughs> growing up. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. I'm joking. Come on. You know I'm joking. But, you see, sometimes we went to the butchers and you had mm -hmm. maybe extra two or three. Mm -hmm. I used to put it in a saucepan and you had lovely stock for... Soup. Scotch broth, I remember. Now, we'll peel a couple of cloves of garlic. Look, I'll show you a quick way of getting that out. Get your knife and just brush oh, it. Nice. No, it's not a mess. <laughs> right, oxtail in. I'm gonna fry that off. We can get that nice and brown. And we've all braised it in red wine and sort of chicken stock before, but I'm gonna get this done with a Chinese influence. You started cooking at home quite early on, right? 17 and a half. 17 and a half. Your mum died. Quite young. Very young, 26. 26. So who taught you how to cook? Nobody taught you. I think you just learn as you get older. And did you enjoy it? Yes, so... uh, I did enjoy it, yeah. Uh -huh. That is a nice vegetable, that. The fennel. Fennel, isn't it? Isn't that lovely? It's beautiful, yeah. If you just slice that up, Mum. Now, these are nice and brown. Okay. They look lovely. Yeah. Put the colour on there. You just slice up the chilli, OK? Just slice it down. I'll keep the seeds in there, because I want some heat as well. That's that anise thing. Star anise, that's right. Yeah. I like ginger, do you? I love ginger, especially fresh. Yeah. Coriander seeds, a little handful. In. Yeah. Some soy sauce. That helps give it that saltiness and a nice dark, rich colour on the vegetables. So as it braises, the meat tenderises quicker. I would never do anything fennel and... The chilies and that, but it smells lovely. Does that smell nice? Mm. And then a little bit of this. This is a a rice wine vinegar. Oh, is it? Yeah. Some oxtail back on top of the vegetables. Yeah. Gonna top that up. Is that beef stock? Yeah. This or is a vegetable a, stock. A, no, a really nice chicken stock. Why are you putting chicken stock in there? Because oxtail itself is quite rich. Yeah. Chicken stock's nice and light. Just cover it with stock. Lovely colour, isn't it? It's a beautiful colour. Little taste. There we there go. go. Big deep <laughs> breath. OK, Nan? Well, that's lovely. I can taste the fennel in that. Is that nice? That's lovely. What? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Damn. Water for Nan! Come on! <laughs> Take some water, Nanny. It's not water, that's it is water. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> While Mum recovers from the kick of the chilli, to go with my Oriental-influenced oxtail, I'm going to knock up a quick, fresh radish salad. Take a bunch of radishes and separate off the edible leaves. Once washed thoroughly, place half the radishes in the bowl with the leaves. Chop the remaining radishes in half and add them too. Next, peel and finally slice a banana shallot. Add them to the radishes and season with salt and pepper. Dress with a good squeeze of fresh lemon juice and a drizzle of olive oil. Then mix. Radish salad, it's that simple. Next up, dessert. Delicious. Poached pears. I love pears. Ready? Yeah. So we're going to poach them oh, yeah. with a little bit of chilli. Chilli? Never heard of that A little before. bit of saffron. No? No. Now, pan on. Take off a little slice like that, so they stand up nicely, and then peel. OK, then. And then the chilli, you know, hold that up and just go down. Yeah. Through. And open that up, OK? Into the water. Seeds in as well. Seeds in as well. Hey, hello, hello, baby. Oh, hello, Holes. Hi, Holes. Why oh, is that it's smell? Good. It smells so good. We've got the most oh, amazing oxtail in there. Hello, mate. Mm. Are you well? Yeah, I get that. Hello, Hi, Danny. Hi, How's your day? Mm. So what are you making, Dad? So we're going to poach these pears, a little bit of chilli, water chili? and sugar. What are they, Holes? Mm. It's saffron. It's exactly that. Saffron is expensive, but you only need the tiniest little bit. A little pinch to make that water go light and golden. We're going to make the most amazing star anise dust. Star anise dust? Dust. So you get your star anise in there, mm -hmm. seed up, and then you start grinding. A little teaspoon of ginger. Give it a nice mix. Thank you, mate. And that's going to dust the top of the pears once they're cooked. Right, get your pears. Drop them in there. Mm. 
And that's what we're going to sprinkle. Mm. Ginger mm. and star anise. Once they're cooked, cool down, sprinkle that over the top. Right, have you guys got homework? Yes. See you guys Come later. Come back, Thank you. Later. Love you, Dad. Love you, Dad. Love you, too. Bye. Turn that down and let them pour. OK. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. After an eight-minute simmer, our pears should be ready. Now, just get your knife, my mum. Put the knife through and see how easy the knife is. So that means they're soft and cooked. Now, you can leave them in there overnight, two or three days. All right. And they just get darker and more beautiful. So I mean, they look impressive. They smell delicious, don't they? Don't they? Look at the colours now. It's lovely, isn't it? Colours are amazing, though. And then take your little star anise dust and just dust over. Oh, look at that. It's lovely. Now for my favourite part, the oxtail. Wow. That is beautiful. Mmm. It just melts in your mouth, doesn't it? I love the way you see that just all yeah. sliding down the bone. Can you carry that to the table, please, Nan? Yes, I will do. Lovely. And I will grab that. That is beautiful. This is my ultimate thrifty dinner. Sumptuous, slow-cooked Chinese braised oxtail with a light and peppery radish salad, followed by gorgeous chilli poached pears with star anise dust. Jack, Polly, Tilly, Megan. Hi. Look at this. Time to see what you think. It's delicious. Good, nice. Mum, what do you think? It's lovely. Is it? Keeps my mind a days gone by. A lot of people just lift it up and mm. eat it with their, with their hands. No. Has anyone saved room for those delicious, stunning pears? We have. We have. I have. I have. Nanny, good to see you. Super <laughs> nan. Cheers. Nice. Cheers. Chili and spice are brilliant in puddings. Here's some sweet inspiration from the masters of spice. Here in the UK, there are only four restaurants with three Michelin stars, and this is one of them. It's fun when you get to the end of the meal and you want something to surprise you. We like to smoke chocolate, put things like cardamom with it. Chocolate carries chili really well, wasabi, ginger. When it comes to cakes, I like to use subtle feminine flavors, such as saffron, aniseed, fennel, lemon, and rose water. And it really lifts the cake. Well, this is um, Tasmanian mountain pepper. It smells sweeter than regular pepper, but it's got that heat to it as well, which is really amazing. It almost smells cinnamon, clovey, like star anise. It's got all that wrapped up in one pepper. Really good if you're poaching pears or making a tartar tar. It's beautiful. It's really aromatic. This restaurant has been trading for over 200 years. One of my favorite things to do is to take a traditional dessert, like say a creme brulee, and to liven it up a bit with some new spices. Ginger gives it a bit of zing, and coffee and cardamom is a really interesting combination and works beautifully, I think. Well, if I'm at home cooking for family and friends, I really like to cook something like a nice rice pudding. Quite simple, rich and creamy, so it's really nice to just top it off with some grated nutmeg, cinnamon, and a warm fruit compote that could have a bit of ginger through it as well. Really lovely way to finish a warming winter meal. At this time of year, when it's cold and you start cooking some traditional British food, you'll find that they're full of spices. And in fact, spices have been so important to us since medieval times. It was a real sign of how wealthy and important you were, the amount of spice you could put in your recipes. Sometimes at home, I'll just poach some dried fruit in a sugar syrup with clove, cinnamon, nutmeg. Quince is also fantastic. And I like to put them in the oven for hours and hours with spices and sugar or even wine and a little bit of chili and let them bake slowly. And you end up with this deep, red, aromatic, exotic, fantastic thing to eat. Over the holidays, a morning routine is set in stone. I do breakfast and the children entertain themselves. And one of my favorite breakfasts to give everyone a boost and get them ready for the day is spicy Mexican eggs. This is a very classic Mexican style brunch dish. Bold, kick-ass flavors. Slice the chili, seeds in. Garlic sliced, nice and thinly. Tablespoon of olive oil. Get your cumin in there. Once that starts getting really nice and crispy, in with your tomatoes. Now, by reducing that, you sort of come down to a delicious paste. Leave that to simmer. 
next, canned beans called black beans. These are authentically Mexican. Just rinse them with a little bit of water. That is beautiful. Turn off the gas and just let it absorb. Leaving the dense beans to luxuriate in the spicy tomato sauce will allow them to soften and soak up all the flavor. Next, oil and season an oven-proof dish for my spicy egg brunch to bake in. I'll just get some of that oil around the outside. Take your corn tortillas, slice them in half, and then just stick them to the side. Take one and place that in the center. Get your mix and place that on top of the tortilla. Spread that out nice and smoothly. I want that crisp shell on the outside. Now, your eggs and cheese. Get the base of the egg and just make a little hole in there and then crack the egg into there, almost like it's a little dugout. And then one to the center. Get a really nice, rich, delicious, strong Montgomery cheddar. Get generous with it on the top. And then season that with these little babies, little chili flakes. They're my little secret weapon. A touch of salt, a touch of pepper. Sit that in the oven to bake for eight to 10 minutes and 180. The smell's incredible. Just a little bit of coriander to finish it off. And that, for me, is what brunch is all about. Let's go. A fantastic fiery brunch to get your party started. Spicy Mexican eggs in a crispy tortilla shell. Holidays are the Ramsey's big chill out. So we want food that's really, really delicious, draws everyone to the table, and is good fun to share. So for lunch, some hot, spicy street food is brilliant. And prawn tostadas, followed by irresistible salted caramel popcorn, is always a winning treat. You can't beat properly home-cooked popcorn. Start off with just a touch of oil in there as it lightly starts to smoke. Corn in. So now, get your lid. Never leave it far away from you. Just a little shake of the pan. Get it going. And then lift that lid at your peril. We See? It's a very exciting pan in there. And when all that little pitter-patter stops, you know your popcorn is cooked. Nice. You could eat it fresh from the pan, but I've got another plan. I'm going to make a salted caramel popcorn. Start off with your sugar into the hot pan. A nice pinch of salt. Now, once you've got it to a really nice dark caramel flavor, stir in your butter. Half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda kickstarts the reaction that gives the caramel a honeycomb flavor. Mix that in. You'll see it reacting almost like a large crunchy. Now the gas is off, and that caramel is a nice, dark, rich flavor. Now pour in the popcorn to coat it with that incredible caramel. It's that easy, and it's going to taste amazing. Lay that nice and flat. Once that cools down, it becomes nice and brittle. We've got that nice, salted caramel flavor, which just takes popcorn to a completely different level. Whilst the popcorn cools down, it's onto my prawn tostada. Wonderful prawns. Gonna marinate them first with a little bit of garlic. Nice and fine. Nice pinch of chili flakes over the prawn. Garlic in. Salt, pepper, and olive oil. Give that a really nice little mix. Whilst the prawns marinate, I'm gonna knock up a salad. Radishes, topped and tailed, and then into quarters. Cherry tomatoes, halved. Spring onions, sliced and seasoned. And then, just to liven things up, a little bit of chili in there and slice them on an angle. Now the avocado. Now, baby gem lettuce. Half, then shred. Freshly squeezed lime juice and a little drizzle of olive oil. Lastly, roughly chopped coriander and give it a mix. That is the perfect base for a tostada. Now for the prawns, and don't be afraid of getting the pan nice and hot. 
teaspoon of olive oil in. Anything less than that sizzle, when you put that first prawn in there, don't put them in. Watch them change colour rapidly. The prawns will take just two minutes to cook through. Lime juice just over the top. Nice. Toss them over the lime. These are corn tortilla. In. It's a dry pan, so that corn tortilla goes nice and crisp on the outside. To build them, generous with the salad. Next, with your prawns. I like to keep the tails in to the centre. And there we have a delicious, yet very humble, prawn tostada, followed by my superb salty caramel popcorn. Beautiful. Prawn tostadas and salty caramel popcorn. Vibrant, irresistible smelling dishes you'll want to dive into. Hot and spicy street food is big, ballsy, and never boring. Here are a few tips on how the professionals cook it at home. This is a Michelin-starred Indian restaurant, but we still take some inspiration from Indian street food. Some of my favorite comes from a fusion of cultures. Indian Chinese is a cuisine in its own right today. My personal favorite is to rustle up a chili chicken and an egg fried rice. The aromas of the pepper, the soy, the ginger and garlic, it's always a winner. You find lots of different combinations in street food. Japanese hot dogs, Indian style tacos. There's no real rules, nothing set in stone. I really look for strong flavors and spice and things that are going to stand out. When I'm at home, one of my favorite things is uh, gochujang. It's a uh, spicy fermented uh, Korean chili paste. If you mix it with some mayo, it can really sort of spice up your BLT on a Saturday morning. You can also use shiracha, the Thai chili sauce. I travel a lot and it's always the street food that gets me really excited. I honestly think that some of the best dishes in the world are served in bus stops in Asia. When I'm cooking at home for friends, family, I often do a few street food snacks at the beginning of a meal for people to have with a beer or a glass of Prosecco while they're waiting for me messing around in the kitchen. I really focus on that intensity of flavour because what you want when you're having a little bite is you want that punch. I find that using spices in different ways can bring really different flavours. So if you're cooking with a spice like nutmeg, if you use loads of it and put it on your jerk chicken wings, you get richness and spiciness and an intensity that is really surprising. A lot of the best street food is deep fried. And when you're eating deep fried food, I think it's really nice to have something to lift it. One of the things that I really like to do is just crush some fresh red chili with some mint and some vinegar, and it makes a brilliant, easy dipping sauce to have with something like samosas or bhajis. Over the holidays, sticky, spicy chicken wings, stir-fried green beans with soy and peanut dressing, and Thai rice is one of our favorites. Jack, give us a hand, please, bud. Why? Because it's your favorite. Yeah? yeah? Chicken wings. OK. Right, let's start off with the marinade. Tamarind paste in first. All of that into there. All of it? Yeah, all of that. OK. Good, in. So two tablespoons of palm sugar, please. How many wings do you think you've eaten so far at the age of 13? Oh, well, I eat probably 50 a year. 50 a year? Yeah, something like that. A nice sprinkle of chilli flakes. How come you love hot food? So... Um, I don't know. I surely love hot food. Some garlic, one nice tablespoon of fish sauce, please, Jen. This is looking really good. Isn't it? And then a couple of tablespoons of oil to marinate. Little taste. Your finger, Jack. Mmm, that's really good. Right, wings in. Get your hands in there and start rubbing in the marinade, please. Yeah. How long do you leave them in here? Do you know what? The longer, the better. Cover that. Mm. And clean film. Wash your hands on it. Excellent. Good job. Ideally, marinate your wings overnight, but half an hour will be enough to get the flavors going. Right, so they're marinated now. If you take the tray out, please, bud. Bottom one, thank you. And then we're going to put some tinfoil on there. Thank you. So, 
fold that in half, it stops them from sticking. And that'll stop the wings from burning. Try and get the wing like that and just sort of scoop it up like that. So you get that really nice glaze on there. Mm. And then just pull mm. that on there. So all that garlic will roast. And then we've got all those wings beautifully done. Okay, mate, then ready for the oven. 170, 25 to 30 minutes. Yep. Good man. Excellent. Nice. It's hot. <laughs> Wings are in. To go with my ultimate Southeast Asian dinner, rice cooked in homemade Thai green curry paste. For the easy green curry paste, roughly chop coriander, lemongrass, green chilies, lime leaf, shallots, garlic, and ginger. A glug of oil and blitz. The paste takes minutes to make, but it'll keep for up to 10 days if covered with oil and stored in a sealed jar in the fridge. To awaken the flavors, lime, roll to release the juice. Next, season with salt and pepper and blend into a smooth paste. Heat the paste until aromatic, adding cooled or leftover rice. When thoroughly heated through, serve. Thai green curry paste is so easy to make. So with rice like this, it's incredible. But simply add to chicken, fish, or veg to create a fantastic meal in minutes. Right, now for the green beans. Beans in. Uh, bring the water to the boil. What's the first thing I should put in there? Beans. Salt. Salt. So, nice pinch of salt in there. Yeah? So, make an amazing dressing. Two nice tablespoons. Yep. Of the crunchy peanut butter, please. Green beans in. OK. Got the rice, the green beans. We're going to blanch them for two, two and a half minutes. What does blanching actually mean? Blanching means sort of part cooking. Right. OK. About a teaspoon of brown sugar. In she goes. Nice. Nice. I'm going to get a pan on now for my beans. So, a little taste. Can you taste it? It's so good. Oh, man. Hmm. Wow. Mm. So if you get the garlic like that, and mm. just slice the garlic down like this. Just keep the knife nice and flat, and that nail there, it's not out like that. It's just guiding the knife, so you can never cut yourself like that. Good. I'll drain the beans. Nice. A little tablespoon of oil. Get the pan nice and hot. And throw the garlic in, people. Good. Nice. Mm, so I can smell garlic. that already. Isn't that lovely? So give that a little toss. Have a little go. Push it down and gently there. That's it. Take your time. Nice. So push down and yep. pull back up. That's it. Nice. So it's getting nice and golden brown. Green beans are drained. And they go in now to the garlic. Mmm. Wow. Combination of green beans. OK, with the rice. Oh, a little smell of that. Oh, mm. wow. I want you now to spoon the dressing with these. In she goes. Nice. Wow. What's Daddy's policy at home? No waste. No waste. No waste, but Now. Smell that now. Mm. Oh, wow. That. It doesn't smell of green beans. It no. smells of... Oh, it does. Oh. Thanks. How nice is that? Mm. Lovely. Amazing. Right. That's the rice. That's mm. the green beans. Now, I want you to sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds on top, please. Nice and generous with the sesame seed. That'll give the beans a little bit of a crunch. Don't those beans smell amazing? Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Jack, look at those beauties. One for me, one for you. Three for me. One for you. I'd like to sprinkle some spring onions. Cool. On top, isn't it? Nice and generous. You've transformed a very cheap and cheerful chicken wing. Yeah. Right. You take them over. Please do not drop them. OK. Jack. Let's go, bro. Nice. This is my ultimate, simple, Southeast Asian dinner. Sticky, spicy chicken wings, Thai green curry rice, and fantastic beans with chilli peanut dressing, guaranteed to get the fussies of eaters into greens. 
Holly, Tana. Ready for Jack's wings. Holly, do you want to help yourself and pass them along? Jack, with some mice? Oh, yes, please. What a tea, guys. What a tea. Holes, I know you're allergic to anything green. How are the beans? They're really nice. <laughs> I've seen you eat more green beans in the last five minutes than you have done in the last ten years. Oh, wow. Nice? Very, very good. Very nice, Jack. Yeah, they're tasty. Right. There's no dainty way of doing this, is there? No. It? Holly, don't worry about your nail varnish. You'll be fine. <laughs> there are loads more great home cooking recipes on my app. Cook with me. You can find it in the App Store. Good luck.